Hello everyone. Sorry for keeping you waiting. I got some tea and I'm ready to start. So let me switch to my monitor. And maybe let's start by talking about um, the past. I haven't live streamed since probably around October or November. Um, it's been quite busy recently. We've been working on the new version of NIM 0.18.0, which should be out very soon. And we've also been at uh, FOSDEM recently. Maybe some of you uh, met us there. Um, certainly, I'm sure some people who uh, are already members of the NIM community or watching have been at FOS them and it was really awesome to meet them all and and chat with them and and drink some beers. So what else happened since the last time I streamed? I think that's really the the major things. Um, at FOS them we sold some books as well. Um, gave out some flyers and in general introduced a lot of people to NIM. It was actually quite shocking the amount of people who never heard of NIM before. Like they weren't even aware that NIM is a programming language so the first thing that um, that we were asked is what well, what is NIM? Some people even thought it, it is like a Vim alternative because of the similarity. <clears throat> and if you're one of those people, um, no, NIM is a programming language. And in this live stream, I decided to write a little command line application that will use the API provided by a guy named Troy Hunt. So recently he wrote this blog post that um, was quite popular in Hacker News, um, in fact very popular, 728 points. And he basically created this API that you can query um, to check how many times a particular password has been uh, was present in uh, his database of passwords that have been pawned. <clears throat> um, and I figured it would be nice to write a little NIM application that lets us query this API uh, safely uh, with no risk of somebody stealing uh, your password. So on the, on the right here I just have uh, the password password piped into the uh, SHA sum um, program which gives us a nice SHA sum and we can then uh, give it to this API. So in this case this API takes a five uh, character prefix and this makes sure that um, the person behind the API, Troy Hunt, cannot uniquely identify the passwords that you've uh, sent him. Uh, makes things a bit more secure. So if we grab the first five characters and add it in here we see that we get um, a lot of different hashes and and all of these hashes uh, are the suffixes to this prefix. So if we look for this, we see that password is actually very popular 
um, incredibly popular in fact. Wow, that's 3,303,003 3, occurrences uh, in the databases. Uh, I'm just checking the chat. Federico is asking, well, you can probably see it in the video. He's asking, what are we doing with the pawn password client? Well, I guess he can't watch, so I'm not, I'm not going to answer it because he's not even watching. Um, but that's basically what I'm explaining here. So <clears throat> this is what our application will do. Uh, it will take a password. It will hash it using the SHA uh, hashing uh, function, and it will pass the prefix to this API, uh, find the actual hash, and then report the amount of occurrences that uh, that password uh, is in the, uh, the database that Troy Hunt has created. So let's do that. It shouldn't take us long. Uh, I wanted to come back with, with a quite quick live stream uh, because previous ones have been quite long so so let's just do it um, so that's not what I want to show CD projects and let's make a new directory called pond password what should we call our client Let's just call it pawn password, passwords, password. Hmm. As usual, the most difficult thing is naming the project. Let's just call it pond. It's just, it's gonna be nicer, I think. Okay, so we've got a nice directory. We initialize it using nimble. And this is a new version of Nimble, which has a much nicer uh, Nimble init command. So it's saying, in order to initialize a new Nimble package, I will need to ask you some questions. The vault values are shown in square brackets. Press enter to use them. Uh, so it already decided to, to use uh, pond, which is our directory name as the package name, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, it already found out that my name is Dominique Pijeta, so it chose that as the uh, package author. And it already decided to use SRC for the new package source directory. I'm happy with that. Um, and now it's asking me, do I want a binary package or a library package? So in this case, we're making a binary package, so I type in bin. And now it's asking me for the initial version of my package. Um, 0 0.1.0 sounds fine to me, so I just press enter. Uh, the package description, um, let's just write uh, a client for the pond, pond, this is how you write it, pond passwords API. And now it's asking me for the package license. Uh, so what should we license this as? I'm gonna go for MIT. And the lowest supported NIM version, uh, I'm going to say, yeah, 0.17.3, which will soon become 0.18.0. Uh, odd, oddly numbered um, uh, patch versions in NIM are, uh, pre-release version, so this isn't actually released, it's just the development version. Um, and supporting 0.17.2 is probably possible, but by now it's quite outdated, so I'm just gonna go for uh, this development version. So we can see now that Nimble has created these uh, directories, a test directory, a source directory, and a pond.nimble file. So let's see what this pond.nimble file looks like. Um, and Vim even actually adds some 
some nice syntax highlighting. I wonder how it knows to do that. It's a nimble file. Anyway, um, yeah, you can see it's basically just some uh, keys and, and values. Um, for example, this binary is something that uh, wasn't really asked in the initialization of the package. So what it does is it tells Nimble to compile a pond module as the main binary. Uh, and so we'll have to create a pond.nim file and it will just be compiled. So we can do that. This looks fine. So I'm happy with this. So let's create, let me just grab a new Visual Studio Code window. Let me just open stuff up on my other screen here. Uh -huh. So we've got it here opened and, oh, and it already actually created a nice file for us. So that's pretty awesome. So we can actually compile this already. We can, we can run nimble build so it verifies the dependencies for, for our package, pond, and it builds a pond in, in our current working directory. So we can now run this and give us hello world. That's just a simple uh, binary that Nimble adds in. <coughs> so next thing to do is to actually start developing this. So we also have some tests here, which are just dummy tests. Uh, we won't worry about those for now. Let's start developing this. So what do we need? We need to be able to ask the user for a password. Um, the best way to do that in NIM is using the uh, terminal package, or not the terminal package, the terminal module. It's in the standard library, so you can just uh, view the, the documentation like I just did. Um, you can even just probably search terminal nim, and it should come up, I think. Yep, there it is. And it has some nice things like I believe it has a way to ask people for a password. Uh, I thought it did. Hmm. Maybe that was in some some nice um, some nice pull request. I do recall somebody implementing a. Um, a procedure that allows you to, huh, hide the cursor, that allows you to get passwords. Hmm. Basically what I'm thinking of is the application will ask you for a password and if you type it in, it shouldn't be shown in the terminal, like when you use uh, sudo. That would be nice. Uh, it's not strictly necessary, but it would certainly be nice. I have a feeling that it's got something to do with height cursor. Let's let's use let's use Google. Name terminal password. I think we'll yeah, this is exactly what we want. Mm -hmm. So Ryan has come up with this. Huh, there's actually a, a Unix um, get pass uh, function, which we could use. Of course, it won't work on Windows, which is a shame. Uh, right. This position still raster, so many pages turned off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, this is a no. 
This looks like spam. What is this? Anyway. So that's a that's a shame. I do remember somebody implementing this. In any case, let's just let's just start out with the simple case. <clears throat> so start by writing this when uh, is my module. Uh, we ask the user for a password, so uh, the password, actually, so let's echo. Please enter your password. And then we do standard in dot read line. I think that will work. Yep. And we've got the password. Um, so that should be easy enough. Let's just echo it to make sure it's it works. So we build and then we run. Please enter your password. It would probably be nicer to have the cursor here instead of on the next line, but let's just test it. Password, yeah, so it works. Um, the way we can achieve having cursor stay on the same line is to just do, do standard out dot write, which will um, which won't include the new line like echo. So since we're going to be doing this a lot, let me just do this. And it's asking for password, type in password, and it works. Uh, actually, we only need this, it seems. That's handy. Okay, so we've got the password. Now, a great thing would be now to hash this password. So for that, we're going to need a uh, SHA uh, library, which isn't in the new standard library, I don't think. Um, Shasan. No, I think so. Let's just make sure that we know which one. I don't even know what that means, one. I guess it's just SHA1, right? Makes sense. So let's let's see. Nimble search, SHA. Ooh, a lot of libraries. Okay. So we've got uh, we've got this one by Onion Hammer. We've got this HMAC library, Shimsham. SP. WD, we've got this one by Yang Co. Mm -hmm. What else do we have here? A lot of libraries. It is a bit difficult to know which one to pick. Um, but I think these are ordered in um, in sort of chronological order as in the first one is the one that uh, has been added um, in wait a second let me let me formulate the sentence correctly this library has been added uh, furthest in the past versus this one which has been added most recently so let's just let's just see this one just check it out. Yeah, so this one is very recent. Just been a day ago that it's been uh, it's been added. So extension of standard SHA one. Wait a second. Are you telling me that there is a SHA one module in the standard library? I should know this. That's going to be embarrassing, isn't it? Oh, no. Hmm. Name standard lib sha. No, I don't think, I don't think there is. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just 
Oh, I see. So there is a sh secure hash module. So we can actually just use this, really. We don't need to use any outside uh, packages. So, how do we do this then? I guess we just do secure hash, um, and then we get a secure hash, and then we convert it to string. Let's try it. So, import secure hash, and then we just do uh, secure hash password. We don't need to explicitly write um, the dollar, um, which is nims to string operator, because echo does it automatically. So let's build it and run it, and let's do password. Ooh, and there it is. That was easy. So is it the same as this one? Yep, yeah, 5BAA, FT8 at the end. Yep, yeah, works perfectly. So now what we have to do is we have to grab the first five characters and pass it to the uh, API, which should be fairly simple. Um, so we've got the API here, the API URL. Uh, we can put it in a nice constant. So <clears throat> you can just call it API URL. We just remove that bit and it works perfectly well. So we've got our hash. Now we just need to um, grab the first five characters. So maybe what we should do is we should create a nice little function called, um, what should we call it? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Range check. I don't know if that's a good name. But anyway, hash. And this is going to be a secure hash type. And then we return the number of occurrences. So we can document it using the syntax. So it takes a uh, hash and returns the number of occurrences. Um, and returns the hmm, and returns the corresponding passwords uh, oh my god I'm really bad at explaining things takes the shell and hash and returns the corresponding passwords um, occurrences in the pond passwords database. There we go. So what we need to do now is create a, so first of all, we need to grab the first five characters. So a prefix, we'll call it, and we'll have to convert it to a string because we're passing the secure hash type, which we can't just take the, um, the prefix of. And because it's a string, now we can um, grab the prefix. So we start at zero and we go to uh, five. But since it's inclusive on the other end, we actually use this little um, less than sign to mean basically four. So we could also just write this, um, but I don't know, five is a bit more elegant, I think. And yeah, that should go as the prefix. Let's just verify it. Let's 
good to double check these things. So we call range check here, we pass it the hash, build it, and ooh, okay, so we've got an error here. So expression range check hash is of type int and has to be discarded. The start of expression is on line 14. Well, that's just wrong. Well, I suppose it's because it's the whole thing that it considers to be the expression, but that seems like an incorrect error to me. Anyway, uh, the fix here is simple. We just have to discard it. Um, uh, the way NIM works is that it forces you to either use return values or to discard them. And since this range check function returns an integer, uh, I'm just discarding it for now because I'm not using it. And now it works. So we type in password and yep, yeah, we get one, two, four, five. Beautiful. So now we can uh, submit it to our API. Now, how do we do that? Um, in order to do that, we use the HTTP client module. And Solitude says that secure hash is actually just a deprecated alias to standard shall one. Really? Could it be that it's um, Let's see here. Projects nim uh, lib pure sha. No, it's not. There is no. There is no s h a one module. It's just secure hash, which is a really. I mean, it makes sense for name, I suppose, but it's a bit weird. Anyway, let's focus. So we use the HTTP client module to make our API request. It's fairly simple, uh, as you can see here. You just create an HTTP client instance and then you call get content on it. Um, but because this API uh, returns um, a 404 status code, we want to handle that. So what this will do is it will raise an exception if it doesn't receive a, a status 200 okay. Um, it's We could catch it as an exception, but it's just nicer to use one of the other procedures. So, uh, where are we? Instead of using the get content procedure, we can just use get, which gives us a response uh, object. And this response object has everything we need. So it has the HTTP version, the status, uh, the headers, and the body of the response. So that's what we'll use. So we create a nice client. Uh, so first of all, we need to import HTTP client. And then we do a new HTTP client and client dot get and we use our API URL together with our prefix. So that's our response and <coughs> now we're going to check the status code. So if response dot code I think it's called will this work? Nope. And I was going to disappear. Okay. Um, I think it's called code. Yeah. So this gives us a nice uh, HTTP code enum. If it's equal to HTTP 200, then we have to have some logic in here. And otherwise, we just Actually, we just did nothing uh, because the default value will be zero anyway. We can make this explicit by just writing result equals zero at the top. So in here, we're going to have to parse uh, this this stuff here. Uh, it's quite a lot of lines. So the best way to do this will be 
to go through each line of the body. So for line in response to body dot split lines. Uh, I think for this procedure we're going to need the str utils module. Uh, so this will split lines and it'll give us an iterator that will yield each of the lines in the string. So we can probably actually, yeah. So it splits the string s into its containing lines. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Uh, you can see there's an example there. Pretty nice. What? It's solitude SF is saying that's not impure, it's an STD. What? Sorry, I, I digress a little bit. What do you mean it's an S? There's an STD? What? Why? That's really strange. Anyway, I don't understand why we would have something like this. But okay, I'm gonna have to look into that because that's just really um, inconsistent with the rest of the standard library. Yeah, I can see that it's deprecated um, because presumably you're supposed to use this. But okay, that's really weird. Uh, okay, so we split the body into lines and we. Uh, what do we do next? So we get each of these lines and we have to check. Um, check the um, the suffix of the hash and we also have to kind of get rid of this uh, colon so we can just actually split it by the colon I believe so let's do that so let <laughs> We think here the parts equals line dot split. This isn't the best way to parse things usually, but for this use case, I think it's good enough. And we can add a little assert um, that it definitely has um, a colon in it. So parts of land is greater than one. So we want well, actually. It should always be two. If it's not, then the, the format changed or or something has gone wrong. So we want to be we want to be told about that. So yeah, we grab the first part, uh, which is going to be our suffix. So we can do that just for making things clear, and then we check. So actually, let's just let's just do it this way. In fact, hash, and then this is going to be five until the end. So this is how you do basically the equivalent of I think what is it like five minus one in in uh, in Python? I think that's the equivalent. In any case, it goes from um, index 5 to the end of the string. Um, it slices it like that. So we can no longer use this name. That's fine. I think it makes sense. So if suffix is equal to parts 0, then we found our um, we found the correct password and we can return the parts one and we have to parse it because it's a string so we use the parse int procedure um, which will take a string and parse it as an integer and raise an error if uh, raise an exception if anything uh, 
is wrong with this string, like if it doesn't contain an integer. And that should actually be it. Um, then at the end, we want to make sure to raise an exception if uh, if we didn't find the password. Um, again, that would be that would be something wrong with. Uh, let's just use value error for that. We could define our own exception, but it's fine to just use this. I think. Um, actually, let's just do an assert. Nah, nah, exception is better. Exception, there is an exception. Um, API didn't have password hash. Didn't have requested password hash, maybe. There we go. And that should be it. Uh, that should work. So we get our occurrences. I don't know, maybe I should call it hits. I don't know. And actually, how does the how does how does this site call up? There's like a website here. It shows it. Mm -hmm. Oh come on! What? Where? There's a website that lets you. Ah, there it is. Mm. What is this website? What what terminology do they use? In the top five most used passwords. Well, I typed in password, so let's just type in something less common, like uh, this doesn't right. Whatever. I'm just gonna call it your password was found uh, to be used. Occurrences times, and we can use the brand new format um, module, I think. No? Unexpected end of format string. What? Why? Why does this always happen when I try to use things for the first time? Cannot open strict format. Mm. What is that module called? <sighs> what is it called? Pure strict format. Okay, well. I would say it should be called something different, but whatever. Is it still complaining? No, it's not. Okay. It seems to be working, actually. So it's building it. Okay, it's asking me for my password. So let's try password. Ah, well. I knew this would happen. So SSL support is not available. That's because you have to compile with uh, SSL support enabled. So we can create a pond.name.config file. So we don't have to pass it on the command line. And we just type in uh, D SSL. And now it should work. So this is already almost an hour long, and it's such a simple little little thing. So password, ooh, ooh, that's not good. But I think I know why it happens, because um, Mac OS has a really old version of OpenSSL, 
uh, by default and it just fails for uh, some websites like Cloudflare websites, which I believe um, I believe that Troy Hunt's website is. So I'm gonna have to find my I'm gonna have to find my workaround for this so it works. <laughs> That's pretty bad. I think I have it. Sorry, I'm just doing things on my other screen. All right, there it is. If I just use this, I believe it'll work. So I can just call it now. I'm gonna have to recompile. Yep, and it works. <laughs> I have to use. Uh, I installed. So the fix basically for this is that you have to install OpenSSL using Homebrew and and then make your Mac use it. It's, it's really bad. I think I just have to update my Mac actually to get it to, to not have this problem. But it's it's easy enough to work around. It's just uh, it's just this and it works. So yeah, my password was found to be used. Uh, it's really difficult to read these numbers. It would be nice to add some commas to them. Some nice, <clears throat> some nice integer formatting. Um, but we can do that later. Let's try some other passwords. So I don't know, QWERTY. What? That's even. That's even more common than password? That's kind of surprising. But basically it works, right? If I type in something complicated like... <laughs> Ooh, that's a bug. That's, a, that's an interesting bug. Actually, that makes sense um, now that I think about it. Um, since we're passing in a prefix, there will be passwords that don't exist, so this doesn't actually, yeah, this shouldn't be there. If it's not there, then that means that it wasn't found. So let's build it again. Let's, let's try this password again. Yay, so it works. It was found to be used zero times. Let's try name is awesome. Woo! Really? That's interesting. <laughs> that's that's very interesting. Um well let's give it a try. Um Golang is awesome. Aww. I guess I guess Nim is more popular than than, than Golang, right? What about Go is awesome? That's also zero times. I guess Nim is both more popular and um, used by people who don't who 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 had their accounts um, compromised. That's interesting. What else can we try? Which uh, three thousand five hundred ninety-one. Okay, well that's fun. So that's working. Um, let's let's create a a Git repository now and and uh, commit it. Yeah, I don't know how 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 Go will ever recover. We're obviously obviously so much more popular than they are. Well, I just realized that I forgot to drink any of my tea, and I went specifically to, to make some. It's still look, lukewarm, my tea. Okay, let's add our stuff. So pond.nimble source, what do we want in here? Everything that begins with .nim. What else do we have? We have these tests. We don't need them really. I'm just gonna keep them. I'm not gonna add them to the 
Um, not gonna add them to the git, but so git commit initial commit. So now the only thing left really is to make this project available to everyone else that has NIM. So let's do that. Um, we need to first of all create create a repository. So new repository, call it pond. Uh, whoa, what is going on Firefox? Why are you so slow? Oh, it's because you were checking to see if that was available or not. Okay, uh, description. Copy that, and it's public. Yep. And here we go. So there it is. Could use a nice readme. That's something that we should add. So readme.md pond the best pond passwords client. See this article for more details. And well, let's write pond lets you lets you lets you check if your password has been compromised. Let's see this article for more details, and let's grab let's grab the article here. It's not what I want. It's also not what I, why am I on Hacker News? All right. Well, that URL is far too long. <sighs> what can you do? It's wrapping, isn't it? <coughs> Just barely. Okay. Installation. First get symbol. See now when, when you're making a um, an in package, this part is the most important because nobody wants to go on a repository for a package and and not see a nice readme that at least gives you some information. So we run nimble install pond usage and uh, please enter your password. Actually, this is my favorite now, so I'm just going to use this one as the example. Okay, so yeah, that's that's a perfect readme. It only took me like what five minutes to write. So we add it in here. Oh, that was a fail. Okay, push that, and now have to publish it. So the question is, if I try to publish it using Nimble, will this work? This feature is quite finicky because it has to use the GitHub API to work. But let's try it. Nimble publish. Please create a new personal access token on GitHub in order to allow Nimble to forward the packages repository. Make sure to give the access token access to public repos. The default browser should open with the following URL. 
Yep, that should be my password, I hope. So it's asking me for my personal access token. So nimble. No, what are you? What? Anyway, last pass annoys me. I'm, I'm thinking of writing my own password manager. Um, nimble publish, right? And we want, it says, the public repo scope. So we want to give it this one. Access to public repositories. But let's, well, yeah, no. Repo, yeah, public repo. I think that's that's all it needs. Um, I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna put it on another uh, monitor because I don't want you guys to see my access token <laughs> that I'm gonna get from this. But yeah, I basically click generate token, and then that gives me the token, and I copy it. I'm gonna have to move this as well because if I copy it in here, you're gonna see it. So it writes the access token, and it failed. <laughs> well, it was worth a try. Um, it failed with something that um, is actually as a result of um, recent changes that I made in a pull request. So it's not something that's Nimble's fault, really. It's just because I recompiled Nimble with the bleeding edge, which just happens to be broken. But let's just do let's just do this ourselves. Um, if Nimble Publish fails for you, you basically just go on uh, nim dash line slash packages, and you just modify this file packages.json. This is going to take a while to open. Um, you can also fork it and clone it onto your machine and then edit it locally. Um, but it's it's easy enough to just do it um, using the web browser if my web browser doesn't freeze completely that is and okay so we just edit this file and we go down to the very bottom go down to the very bottom and we just copy the, the last entry, which happens to be a, a SHA library, a SHA library. I don't know if I should be pronouncing it SHA or SHA, but anyway. And then we do pond, and then we change the URL to our own URL, which is that. Uh, we, can, we can add some tags like application, passwords, security, um, binary, yeah, that's enough, that's enough tags probably. Um, and we'll have to copy the description again. Uh, sorry, maybe this is a bit boring, but Make sure that the license is correct, and yeah, um, add pond as the commit name, and I can just commit it directly to master because I've got the permissions. Uh, but you will you would create a new branch for this commit and start a pull request, and and then I would um, verify it and merge it. So yeah, uh, that's in. So we can now run nimble refresh, which will download the package list, and we can search for pond. And it's in there. Nimble already knows about it. So now we can do nimble install pond. So it downloads it from my repo, verifies the dependencies, which is just an inversion. Uh, starts the installation process, builds it, and installs it. And we should now have it in our, yep, in our path. It's in 
uh, my home directory under .nimble bin pond, and now I can run it, type in my password, and it gives me it. So that's really, really awesome. Nim is awesome. I always love this. What else can we check, guys? Yeah, let me check the uh, check the chat. Somebody's saying Ethico, Eth, Eth Echo, saying that they moved from LastPass and that it doesn't handle four thousand passwords very well. Yeah, it's it's really annoying. I'm. And I have to constantly move between the browser extension and the desktop app. Um, just because I have passwords for SSH uh, accounts. So sometimes I use them and I have to copy them and it's like, oh, I have to write my own. Anyway, yeah, one password. I think I was using it, but they're payment plans kind of turned me off um, yeah anyway do you guys have any questions or um, I don't know do you want me to try any passwords anything like that uh, this is pretty much finished um, it would be nice to have the hiding of the password field uh, I, I see that Vindar has actually given me a link. Let me see if I can... Uh, where is it? There it is. Let me click on it and see if we can maybe implement this. Actually, let me show you something since... Uh, let's just kill that. <clears throat> since this is basically a working... Um, a working application. Um, this is about the time that you would make a release, right? So let's make a release. And the way that you do that in, uh, in Nim and with Nimble is that you just tag, um, uh, you just create a tag for the current commit um, using git. So git tag a v0.1.0, we tag it, we just write a message like version 0 0.1.0. I don't think you have to create an annotated tag, so but yeah, git push tags. And now if we do nimble search pond, and I think the flag is I, maybe not. Hmm. Nimble. Oh, no, that's not what I want. I want ver. Brain fart there. Ver and see it, it it checks, it queries the versions and it knows that there is now a I probably should have shown this before I created the tag because it would have just said that there is no versions. Um but yeah. So now Nimble will be aware of, of this version. Um okay, so this is how huh. That's a nice one actually. Well, I'm just gonna zoink this, I guess. <laughs> Although this really should be in some sort of package or something. Um, but it's 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 a easy enough implementation anyway. Uh, in fact, let's just create a a utilities module. Utilities.nim. Let's add our function here. Sorry, I'm gonna get rid of the underscores. Thanks for the code, by the way. So input to the terminal. Why is it still? Oh, okay, just took it a while. Yeah, that should work. Um, I'm not gonna have this, I just want the... Yeah, this seems... 
char and get the char until we get an enter. Okay. Somebody will need to test this on Windows, but that's cool. So let's try it. Get password. Really simple implementation as well. So yeah. Let's see. Where's my nice command that I used? There we go. Ah, now we get nice warning, which I should explain. Um, first, let's just see that it works. Yeah, it works uh, very well. Very well. And I actually, I'm not a big fan of of um of this type of so let's add a new line i'm not the biggest fan of it eating the characters it's, it sort of seems as if the application is um frozen to me but that was like my first uh my first experience Oh, I see that he's saying that I messed up my indentation for result. You're right, I did, didn't I? So it isn't actually working because I typed in password. Anyway, um, I dislike this convention, and I know that it's like a Unix convention that Mac OS and uh, Linux use now um, to just not show the characters when you type them, but I remember the first time I used Linux, I had absolutely no idea about this. And I tried typing in my password and it wouldn't type. And I was wondering why. And I actually had to open the form thread asking people, why is my password not, type, not typing in? So I would actually like to change the behavior of this, uh, of this function. Let's just make sure that it works this time. No, it doesn't work. Did I just mess it up? Again, because I just indented it without thinking. No, looks fine now. Hmm. <laughs> so it isn't working. Why is it not working? What? What am I doing wrong? It's obviously being returned. What the hell? Is the API rate limited and it's and it's um Or something like that? Is, is that why? Let's just debug this. Um, check the prefix and stuff. Hmm. P1 says it probably adds the new line. That's a good point. But no, it shouldn't. But we'll check the the prefix of the sha. Yeah, the the sha is wrong. So there's definitely something incorrect going on here. So that's a bit of a a gotcha in them. Sometimes your string might appear to be correct, but it's actually actually contains some um, some other characters. Yeah. So you can see if we use a uh, wrapper, which is like Python's uh, function almost similar. It shows you that it's password followed by uh, 13, which is, I believe, a new line character. So, well, it's easy to fix this, really. Uh, maybe a bit hackish, but 
we just do result dot strip. I think that's the function. Strips chars from turns to resulting. Da, 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 da. But what's the default white space? Yeah, I think that will work. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it works. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, there's gotchas in every language, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I could I could do result um, and then the I want Pimon just saying this this thing. Um, I just realized, by the way, that I forgot to increase the font size of my code. I hope it's fairly readable. And actually, yeah, this is too much of a hack. If your password is legitimately um, password with a space, then this is going to be removed. So... Question, my question is, why is it adding 13? I think 13 is is the line feed character, which is which is L, I think. I think that's the case. But no one should have a line feed character in in their password, right? You can't. You can't, uh, you can't do that. So what I will do is I will tell strip specifically because by default it removes all white space, which includes um, spaces. It includes new line characters and things like that. But we can tell it to just remove 13. And that should also work. And no, it's not. <laughs> because I am passing it as leading when I should be telling it chars equals. This should work though. Yep. Build. Building, building, building. There we go. Password and yep, yeah, it works. Works a treat. What if I type in? Um, all right, come on. I should have just run it instead of recompiling it. Does it append slash r? But well, character is not. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It does. You're right. <clears throat> well, let's make it even better then. Go until until that. I'm just going to change it until <coughs> not sure this will work. In fact, I should make it even better. Maybe well, what does what does get? Is there like a invalid value that it can return? Or does it always, well, let's just assume that it's this one, just in case. So we don't have a, a um, so we don't have a, you know what, I do want to find out what this does. Read a single character from the terminal, blocking until it is entered. The character is not printed to the terminal. So, on Windows, it does some really 
crazy looking stuff. In fact, on, on Linux or on other platforms, it also does really weird stuff. There doesn't seem to be any any actual um, error handling in this. Like, is it possible to break this? In any case, I'm just going to assume it's not possible. And, and yeah, you're right. I don't actually need this. No, I do need this. What am I talking about? What are you talking about? You could just init ch with get ch. I could, but eh. Wow, my streaming health is going down a lot, it seems. That's not good. You just init ch with get ch and then append calling get ch after appending. Yeah, that's better. I'm not really sure what you mean, guys. Are you saying I should? Append calling get share after appending. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter that much, I don't think. Yeah, I think my streaming is going really badly. So I can see red. So, anyway. Oh wow, that's a pretty bad bug. Hmm. Yeah, okay. But I did find a bug in it though, which is a bit odd. I actually cannot terminate the application. Like if I press Control C, it doesn't um, it doesn't let me, <laughs> which which is pretty bad. Uh, God, let's see if it if it gives us anything at all. Like I have to press enter in order to be able to terminate it. Oh, come on. Huh. Three. That's an interesting one. And then this is four. Huh. Yeah. Um, so we, we do have to handle this anyway, I think. So if it's in three or four, then we break. Because otherwise your yeah your users will not be able to quit. Yep, there we go. Okay. But yeah, I think I can I can do that. Right, so. Let me think here.
right? I think I got the logic right. I hope. I can still control C it. Yep. And if I type in password, yep, it works. Beautiful. And then we can add echo if password dot len is equal to zero, then we just quit. No password entered. Uh, why are you complaining? Is it just you being slow? Yeah, that's okay. See you later, Vindar. Thank you for thank you for joining us. I'm actually it's one hour and twenty five now, twenty five minutes. I've been streaming. Yeah, I think it should go into the terminal package. Um, I I could have sworn that there was that there was a, a pull request for this already. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, all right. Control C. Yep. No password entered. Why am I? All right. Well, let's just wait for it to compile. I don't know if my can. Can you guys see my stream? Okay. Because I'm seeing like really, really bad frame drops here. So I don't know if it's working well or not. Anyway, um, so that's working. So yeah, the thing that I've been ignoring is this warning here. Package pond has an incorrect structure. The top level of the package source directory should contain at most one module named pond dot name, but the file name details the name was found. So this is because of our utils module. And what Nimble does by default is, even though your a binary package is a binary package. Uh, it installs the NIM files to be used as a library. Now, I think I will change this in a future version of NIM. Um, <laughs> it's a slideshow. Yeah, sorry. I don't know why, but my internet is horrible. I guess maybe I'm being throttled for too much upload. <laughs> but this is really, really bad. I can see it dropping. 9.5% frames. I think I'll pretty much end this soon anyway. Um, but yeah, basically to fix this, you sort of just follow um, the device. Uh, <clears throat> really, because this is a binary package, we can just do skip text. I think this is also a sequence, yeah. And that should get rid of it. Yeah, that's it gone. And yeah, it should still work. So again, in, in a future episode, or in a future episode, in a future version of Nimble, uh, this will be gone. Okay, so you guys can hear me. That's something, at least. Still though, it's like, I can, I can see that it's not uploading anything, which is kind of worrying. Oh, suddenly green. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll upload this video to YouTube anyway, so uh, so that should be better. Um, so yeah, so this is working. This is working fine. So now we can commit this. Uh, we also need to add source details in. Hide password. Uh, when entering. We push that. Now I actually want to change how this works because like I said, I dislike that it eats it up. I want it to add asterisks. So I will I will do that. I will make it type in an asterisk. See if that works well.
Why? Oh, I know why. <laughs> that's a new line, isn't it? So that's not all we want. Um. Oh, that makes sense. Because I typed in P. So the password P has been used 96,000 times. Makes sense. P A S S E. <laughs> yeah, it works. Look at that. See, I think that's much better. I think that's how Linux should work. Unless you guys can give me a good reason why it shouldn't work that way. But yeah, it works. Works beautifully, I think. That still works. Beautiful. So show asterisks when entering password. Okay, so now we can release a new version. So I will show you how to release a new version using Nimble. So you just go in here, you change the uh, version, and I think this is pretty much 1.0 level material here. Uh, so I'm changing it to 1.0.0. And yeah, all we have to do is we have to commit this. Say version 1.0, push that. So once again, if I do nimble search uh, ver in order to tell it to query for versions, uh, pond, you can see that the only version uh, is v0.1.0. But if I now tag this version as 1.0.0, type in version 1.0.0, save that, push, tags, you have to make sure to push the tags with the tags, uh, dash dash tags flag. You can see it created a new tag. And now if I search for it, we should see two versions. And yes, we do. We've got uh, version 1.0.0 and version 0 0.1.0. So yeah, that's, that's working brilliantly. And now if I do nimble install pond again, we currently have version 0 0.1.0 installed. So if I do this, it should download the latest version, and yeah, it does. It's installing 1.0.0. And yeah, so it's saying that there's already a sim link, it's replacing it, it's fine, and it works. Uh, so Solitude SF is, is asking, um, how it interacts with Backspace? <laughs> That's a good question. It probably doesn't interact with the Backspace at all. Let's just see. <laughs> yep, doesn't at all. <coughs> That's a bug. Uh, I think. I think that would be far too much uh, work to fix. So. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it at that. Um, maybe we can come back to it, but I think for now, version 1.0 has some bugs. Works pretty well though. Um, and yeah, you can install it with a simple nimble command. Where is it? Where's my beautiful software? Pond. Yeah, just nimble install pond and it should work. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna end it here, guys. Thank you for joining me. Um, hopefully I'll make some more live streams soon. Um, who knows though, the last break was quite long. <laughs> might happen again, might not, but at least I got back into it, so yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. I will see you later. If you missed some of this, make sure to check out uh, YouTube channel. Um, I will probably tweet a link to the, to the YouTube uh, YouTube video as well once I upload it. And and yeah, 
And Pimonch is saying that that's why no one outputs asterisks for passwords. Yeah, but but then it's even more confusing if you don't have any any output at all and backspace fails, then that's even more confusing. In my opinion. You might expect the backspace to work, but it doesn't. Anyway. See you guys.